welcome to Carlton County Memorial Library's Youth in Action Summit. This is uh, our first summit for teens in Carlton County. I was inspired to host the Carlton County Memorial Library's Teen Summit after attending the National Forum on Teens and Libraries in Seattle, Washington in January. There we are faced with questions of how do we enhance services for teens and libraries? How do we promote programs that appeal to the thousands of teenagers that are not here today? That was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> but seriously, the role of the library for teens serve, means that it serves as a place for the entire community. Uh, places where teens can go to get help with schoolwork, places where they can express themselves and develop uh, socially, as you will see by some of the performers here today. So without further ado, I would like to welcome you again to Carlton County Library's Teen Summit, where our focus is expecting excellence in education through literacy. As you will see in our agenda, we will have a poem by Mrs. Lynn Douglas Simmons. We will have an organization within the community called AHEC that will talk about their, uh, their emphasis on health and um, how they are preparing youth and teens for the future. And also we will have teen performances as well as a little bit of black history trivia as this, is, as this teen summit is dedicated to um, the history of African Americans as well. Thank you very much. Okay. So with that, we'll start with our first uh, teen performer, and Mrs. Sierra. Say your last name. Devor. Miss Sierra Devor. I met her at the Poetry and Pizza, pizza event, you can come on, <coughs> and she, she presented a poem that was very, very thought-provoking, and she will present that to you today. I asked teens all over the county to um, come up with uh, poems or find original poems or, or use original poems to express themselves, and based on whatever inspired them, it did not have to necessarily be a poem about an African American um, histor history, historical person. Okay, so I will let you hear from Ms. Sierra DeVore. Hello everybody. Um, the poem I wrote is called The Jury and the Man, and as usual I was inspired to write it because I wanted to get pizza from the Poets Street Pizza Club meeting. <laughs> um, there you go. Um, I wrote this literally the day before it was due, as always, and I was, um, oh, I have a microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. Um, I was kind of inspired really late last night about how I feel other people judge me because I find that I let people judge me and that's something I need to overcome. Especially I let women and girls of my same gender judge me. Okay. So it's called The Jury and the Man and this is how it goes and I can't read it. Here it women make me feel ugly even though I'm lovely on the inside, or so they say. But I don't feel lovely today. I didn't care enough to care that my womanhood wasn't there. But when I see lovely ladies, I feel, feel their eyes piercing me. And their judging righteousness washes over my bluntness, leaving nothing but my heart to be poked and torn apart. Maybe I don't brush my hair. Maybe my breasts aren't all there. Maybe my face is as plain as the clothes I wear this day. I buy my man nails. I don't wear heels. My posture isn't good. I'm in love with my food. I like me, but sometimes a woman makes me cry. Harsh judgments come to pass. They say I'm rough and rash. Whatever. Here's what I know. I like trees and paddle boats. Women can play because they can't. I should have been born a man. Thank you. Free microphone. One hundred dollars. Bidding now. <laughs> so Sierra, also tell us what inspired you to uh, write the poem. Um. Um, well, I have issues with people kind of judging me because, well, I don't wear makeup and all the time I always see these girls obsessing over their makeup and their hair and they take hours and they just 
they put a lot of emphasis on how they look, and I understand that's okay because we do want to look good and we do want to look presentable, but however, I just don't feel like I should put enough emphasis on how I look so much as how I should let people see my character. However, even though I believe that, um, I see all these women just looking so beautiful and so fabulous, and it just makes me feel kind of hurt because I don't look like that, so. But at the same time, I like me. Okay. Good job. Next, we will have one of our youth organizations before us. It is known as the Area Health Education Consortium. And it is a group that is affiliated with the Carleton County High School. They work to provide experiences that will prepare teens for the next, the next generation healthcare careers. And we have our performer that will come up here and talk to us about how that program has influenced her life and how she's taking advantage of those opportunities. Hello everyone, my name is Alondra de Santiago and I'm a 12th grade student at Colleton County High School. Hello, I'm Jessica Tavari and I'm also a 12th grade student. We just want to tell you a little bit about Low Country APEC. It's a program for anybody interested, well, 9th through 10th graders, um, interested in the healthcare field. And pretty much what we do, we have monthly meetings and we have guest speakers and we just have opportunities to job shadow health professionals and at the meetings, we learn about um, healthcare skills that we should know once we go to college and perhaps medical school or, or life beyond high school. And it really just prepares us for that future, and it gives us a little bit, a little taste of what the healthcare field is going to be like. <laughs> um, a little bit of the programs that we do: you can become CPR certified or Teen Community Emergency Response Team. You can become a member to um, help your community in case of a natural disaster. Um, Low Country AHEC has allowed me to um, write a little bit more about like on college applications and it gives me more experience and it's given me that experience to be able to write um, essays that I've used for college and it's just a great opportunity for anyone who wants to be in the healthcare field. Um, it's just opened my eyes a lot to what the healthcare field is going to be like and I've met a lot of people through it, and I'm really thankful to um, Low Country Hick in general. It's really helped me become, I guess, like a better person. <laughs> oh, well, anybody who's interested, we have brochures and pencils, and a little bit about a little bit more about what Hick is. If you want to stop by and get some. So any ninth through twelfth graders, you are welcome to come. <laughs> Thanks. Before we go on to our next uh, item on the agenda, uh, which includes uh, team performances as well as history trivia, um, one of the things I want to talk about today, and to make this less less formal, is how do we begin to engage young people in the community. And with this thought, I want you to think about what are some of the places that we can go? How does the library not only just perform services for those who use the library, but how do we go out into the community to reach more young people? Because there are a lot of young people who, who think reading is boring, and they feel that the library only has, has that resource, books. But one of the things we're trying to do is redefine what the library means. It means a place where we can come together, we can have social interactions, we can provide um, meaningful experiences for teens. One of the things that we plan to do with this summer reading program is to include maker spaces, the idea of maker spaces, something that you can make and create. One of the most important things that teens can do is to rethink, make, and also create. So those are some of the words that you'll start seeing me use in flyers and everything that I do because I want you all to begin to think creatively. 
Um, I also have a few group of young men who I'm very proud of today. I'm glad that they're here. But one of the things I also want them to do is develop confidence, and that means coming to the front of, an, of the room. So I would like them to do that. Because so many times in our community, we have, we have um, a group of people who, who prefer to be at the back. And the history of our community is not, our ancestors did not fight for us to be at the back. And that's the point of this whole African American history program and the point of. Oh, thank, thank you for giving me a couple of shots. Thank you. Thank you for coming here. You can take a seat. Um, and so, one of the things that we also want to focus on is to, is to form those partnerships with churches as well as uh, community organizations. Um, some of whom um, were invited, but we wanted to form those partnerships so that when we have our fundraiser, they, um, that they know the library is working to help improve the conditions for youth in the community. Because many times teens think there's nothing else to do, um, but that is not the case. So before we go on with that, that really includes um, the idea of the teens issue, teen issues, and. With that, I do want to hear some call-outs. I want one person to come up with one issue that they think is important for us as Carlton County leaders. I'm a leader, I'll say that I'm a part of the Leadership Carlton Program. And we're talking about how do we um, attack some of the issues that are affecting teens. Um, Ms. Santiago, can you think of something that, um, some negative thing that we want to turn around that's going on in the youth community? Maybe teen pregnancy. Okay, teen pregnancy, correct. That's one thing that we want to, we want that to decrease so that um, our young ladies will have, a, have the best opportunity to succeed. Um, any other youth that have any other issues that they think um, we need to address? And the library can be a part of that solution by hosting. Hold on, sir. Let me, let, me, let me address sagging, all right? We got, we got sagging right here. I just hit it, the nail on the head there, sir. There you go. There you go, sir. Really sagging. Do you, do you see these pants all the way down here? No. No, they're not past my knees. They are on my waist. Thank you. We are not going that far. Please, world, hear me out. No sagging. No bagging. You're preaching to the choir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Knowledge is power. Use it. Anything else? Mr. Williams, I have something I'd like to say. Um, I belong to the Retired Teachers Association. That's the only way we'll know. I'm uh, Willie Rabb, and I belong to the Retired Teachers Association here in Carlton County. And every year, we have learned that lots and lots of scholarships are lost because young people are not applying. And I can't remember your name, sweetie. Uh, what's your name again? Alana. She talked about um, trying to get prepared and learning more about how to write essays. Our young people need to get more involved in writing essays because that's one of the, the main requirements and more thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars are going back because our young people are not applying for the scholarships. So get all you can get while you're there. Start as freshmen if you have to, but try to learn how to write decent essays. This is the main thing we need in our county. We now have people with the association that's going in and working with the guidance counselors to try to encourage young people to apply for these scholarships and learn how to write essays. Okay? That's great. So, if we're not ready for the team performances, we do have a performer that's ready. Are you looking at me? Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Might as well. Okay. So <laughs> next we'll have this Linda Lou Simmons, who is the Carlton County High School's media specialist, who is all doing dynamic things 
over there at the media center because I always partner with her to let her know about my events and she always supports um, our events from the Call Teen Idol program to the um, to this event actually so she has been my biggest supporter. Um, one of the, um, I have an announcement that um, I would like to make while we're getting set up for that. Um, this year we, we worked to apply for a grant. We had two interns, we had four interns last year, um, sponsored by the American Library Association, um, division known as YALSA, the Young Adult Library Association. And I got a chance to meet the YALSA president um, and in January when I attended the conference in Seattle. I got a chance to meet with some of, not only the president, but, but the president of ALA. And that was a really big opportunity because me being a, a rather young librarian, as well as the only African-American uh, male librarian in a room of about 60 people, was, wasn't, it wasn't strange for me because I attended conferences before across the country, but it gave me a chance to really talk about the importance of embracing technology in a rural area such as Walterboro and keeping program, program, programming alive for young adults. And what I was really going to say to you all is that I got a chance to apply for the grant. Michelle and I co-wrote that and we had four interns last year and they did grant us a, the $1,000 grant this summer so we will have four interns working here at the library and it is sponsored in part by Dollar General who is uh, who has been a wonderful partner for literacy in not only our community but all over. And so if you get a chance to go to Dollar General, tell them uh, that the library supports what they do and um, that's one of our biggest supporters for the young adults. Well, good evening. Good evening. Um, I was quite reluctant to read my work for you this evening, which is probably quite surprising since I host Poetry and Peace every month. Those of the students who are present this evening who have asked me, Miss Mom, when are you going to read one of your poems? Well, I thought I would be safe tonight. <laughs> so, some background. In 2003, I was working in a, high school, a middle school in Blackview, and I remember seeing the movie Drumline. And I didn't know very much about historically black colleges and universities or percussion instruments or drumlines, but I was fascinated when I saw the final scene where they had that playoff. And I said, wow, that is just incredible. And I started wearing my hair in a, a natural style, and a friend said, well, you know, that would look a little better if you actually went to a, a barber shop because, you know, men know how to cut hair in that style. So I let him take me, and while there, there were some young people using empty five-gallon tubs as drums to practice with. And they were so just wrapped up in what they were doing that it just swept me along with them. And one of the young men described being in a parade with the bass drums, and he said, you know, it feels like we're bringing the earthquake. And that just painted such a picture in my head that I had to write this poem. Bringing the earthquake. I bring the earthquake. I feel the ground shake, reverberate with sound vibration. Power magnifies creation of this mighty meld of force and wind. Hammer and skin as I play my drums. High stepping, sassy quick, chick on the side, belt slide, hanger glide, stride, parade pride, look at me, 
hear me as I communicate. Great base snare, symbols, tentanabular altercation, tympanic elatonian orchestration. Can you contemplate? Copacetic, the rhythms I make as I bring the quake. Paradiddle, flash and thunder, cadence, right, left, right, double, double, rudimentary, elementary. Youngblood says, can you catch me? I am artistry and syncopation, sophisticated synchronization, quad man, bass clef, alliteration. Watch my hands fly, arms a blur, mallet sticks unseen, funky, nasty intonation of the beat I bring. Arms of steel, bare, brown, and glistening, fathers, uncles, cousins, listening, booming, beating, bursting, beating, bringing the earthquake. Thank you, Ms. Mom, for that powerful performance because it's very important that our young people understand the history of the beat of the drum and all of the, how the tribes use that to convey messages and how it just became a part of our culture. So what we will do next, we'll have, um, we will have a team, our team perform and we're going to have fun with that. Um, and so we'll, we'll do that, and then we will get into our trivia. And um, uh -oh. no ground. <laughs> I want you to know this is a poem by Langston Hughes, not me, Langston. Fire, fire, Lord, fire in my soul. Give me a second. <laughs> I'm trying to get serious here. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> All right. Become one with Langston. I'll try. I've done that before. He was serious. Mm -hmm. I've been good and I've been clean. Mm -hmm. I've been stinking low down mean. Fire. Fire, Lord. Fire burning in my soul. Tell me, brother, do you believe if you want to be in heaven, you got to mourn and grieve? Fire, fire, Lord, fire in my soul. I've been stealing, I've been telling lies. I had more women than pharaohs had wives. Fire, fire, Lord, fire, gonna burn my soul. I mean, fire, Lord, fire, gonna burn my soul. Amen. All right, brother. Now, brother. Thank you, Karen, for that uh, insightful uh, rendition. Uh, um, and Langston Hughes was, of 
course, a part of the Harlem Renaissance, one of the greatest writers of that time. And he not, not only, he was the only one that wrote about fire, as well as um, James Bolton, who also wrote and used that, that allegory that, to describe um, what it really means to, to really be passionate and to allow emotion for justice and emotion for equality. To, to be described as fire. Shut up in my room. <laughs> so with that, we're going to go on to the... Uh, <laughs> with that, we're going to go on to... Uh, <laughs> Good. Some, some people caught that. So we're going to go on to our team performance. Um, they will take a minute to get their self together, themselves together for that. <laughs> From there, we'll go on to trivia. <laughs> Ready? Hold up. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, shall we go now? Excuse me, um, you got your phone for your music? Easy way? Well, then you need to speak, brother. Oh, okay. Excuse me, son. Can you need me to hold on? Hold on. 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 We are clowns, of course. Three. So, in which first thing that comes to mind is mm, that pizza I smell back there. Oh, you smell that pizza too? I smell that pizza. Now, that pizza smells good. What place that is? Little Caesars. That's Little Caesars. Five dollars. 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 Five Oh, we got a few right now. Well, I'd like to start off by saying my name is Mr. Sandwich, Fred Sandwich. This here is. My name is Baconator. And my good man here? Baconator Jim. Baconator. Bacon, native, Junior. Don't forget about Junior. Well, first topic that comes to mind is cell phones. Cell phones. You know, little items that you use Another every day device. that you use, call everybody. Cell phones. Why might we have cell phones? Please. Someone? Anybody? Any? Anyone? Communication? You, sir. You, sir, right there. You. Yes. What say, yes, sir? You got something to say? Anything about the, the used cell phone? Why do we use cell phones? We make calls. Okay. Cool. What yeah, are you using good. calls for? We have house phones for that. I can take my house phone. Oh, that's ring exactly. Ring. exactly. Exactly. So, are you saying you use your cell phone for emergencies? Yeah. Are you sure? No. What is that? These young folks do now? It's texting. Texting. I think that's texting. Texting. And Instagram, you, isn't it? Text. No. Is, are you on Instagram? No. Oh wait a minute. Oh, Facebook. Facebook. Twitter. Any of those things there? Yeah. Which one you want? Are you sure? Yeah. Which one you want? Facebook. Okay. You want that Facebook? And what might you do on Facebook? Is it? Facebook. Put a picture of your face on there. <laughs> is, uh, do you put it on the book? Or Correct me if I'm wrong. Um. Out there, are y'all young folks on Facebook? Yeah. Mm, sir. Are there any grown ups still there? Yeah. Okay. And what might those folks be doing on Facebook? That you know of. Oh, man. Oh, ma'am. Excuse me. Are you on Facebook? Yes. Okay. Twitter, any of that? Mm -hmm. are, are you uh, tweet tweeting? Or is it tweeting? <laughs> <laughs> Not Twitter. You, you, no Twitter? No Twitter? Um, Facebook? What do you do? What, what do you do on Facebook? I talk to my friends from different parts of the country. Hmm. Across the country? Or my sister's across the country. Oh, okay. Interesting. I've heard about another one. What's it called? Uh, Skype? Oh, Skype. Yes. Oh, the video you have that Skype? Anyone you have talk to? Skype? Uh, what, what am I to use that for? Please inform me. <laughs> it's like a call, but you actually get to see the person. Oh, so in other words, like a video chat now? Mm -hmm. I'll make you try this. Skype? Yes. No, you don't. You got something to say, sir? Excuse me. Come on, Skype. 
Please, Please say a little bit louder, sir. I did not hear you. Repeat yourself. Yo. Come on, brother. Knowledge. Sure. Knowledge, my brother. Knowledge. Come on. Come on. You don't need a video chat. You scare people. Well, oh, that is true. Scared. I have scared a baby once. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know this is a fresh you professionally, professional, excuse me. Do you, see, do you see the colors? Do you see the colors? Do you see that? You cannot buy this in the store. This you is the national flag. Classified. National flag of my country. Huh? And what does your country be, sir? He don't know. Peter Broyer. Hmm. And uh, where might this be located? On the south side of my house. <laughs> the name of my country is called Bacon Town. Oh, Bacon Town. Yes. In which everything is made of bacon. My car, your way of bacon, my seats, it's made of bacon. His window. I run bacon. off of grease, <laughs> which from my bacon. My tires, of course, are bacon. But the rims are shiny bacon. Shiny bacon. <laughs> Saltine bacon. Saltine. That's part of it. Just like that light bulb right there. Right. Just like that light bulb. Just like that light bulb. I have this outside, nah, if you want to look at it afterwards. <laughs> Sir, do you have anything you would like to say? I would like to say this here. <laughs> All right. Do you see that sir? Mm. This young man right here? Young man right there yes. Blue? Yes, yes, yes. He's wearing blue like that. Stand up, sir, for a second. Blue? That right there is too much blue. And we want to address something here. That there is a gang color, son. Gang color. Just want to let Are you know that. What's, what's gang what's affiliated? Gang, what gang color is? That is called the Crips. Oh, if you want to know. You I am sorry, I said sir, a bad sir, word. Sir, sir, oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, you, you have to leave. You are You're part of a gang. Excuse, Excuse me. Are you, uh, what do they call it? Crip walking? Crip walking. Crip walking. <laughs> and how you crip walk, sir? You crip walk like this here? <laughs> 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 no, I think that's the dance. That's the dance. That's the dance. That's the crit. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Well, I need not do any of that. <laughs> now, we didn't know there was a bunch of cripples around here. We were wearing blue. Oh, 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 oh. Three of them. Three. Oh, okay. Tic tac toe. <laughs> and they're sitting in a row? Oh, in a row. Now, yeah. yeah. would that be a gang color you have on? It seems to be blue. Oh, my goodness. Is that one of your school shirts? Oh, wait, wait, sir. Hold on, sir. Do you, do you see? Oh, no, you slide. You slide. I, I slide. slide. You got I, like, I, I like to say one crazy thing. Go ahead. I want that purple stuff. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Y'all ready, sir? I want that purple stuff. Oh, good. Got it?
And I understand that some of the questions do date back to a time where some of you actually lived, so you have an unfair advantage for that, which is not too sound. I mean, we know we all we're, keep going. Okay. So I'll start off with this question. Something that you all, I'll change the question around. What is the name of the movie, which was first a book, a Pulitzer Prize winning book by Alice Walker that featured the character Harpo? Oh, no. Okay, so we have a difference with that answer. Excellent. So we, we have we have a difference. Uh, for our first point there, and I would need a recorder to volunteer to record that Nicholas has earned the first point for that. Okay. Oh, she's been recorded. Thank you. This next performer is a native South Carolinian. She is known not only nationally but worldwide for playing in the Batman TV series, and she is from South Carolina. No, I don't know. To give you a hint, she is no longer living, but she is from South Carolina, and she played the role of Catwoman in the Batman series. Okay? Okay, you can raise your hand. You can just no. Okay. Mm -mm. Yes, Ms. Wilby? We got the kid. Earth the kid, excellent. What, what's your name? Oh, yeah. I have never seen her. Okay. Excellent job here. So we're going to the next one. Which group? And we also make a rule that if you got the question correct, um, we'll let the next, you, you can't get the next question, okay. the direct next question. So, and then somebody else knows it. <laughs> okay. So with this one, which group, a Motown group, featured Diana Ross, which, Lawrence Ballard, and Mary Wilson? Yeah. Is it good times? Oh. Which, <laughs> no. Oh. 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 Which musical group oh. of singers Include Ms. Diana Ross, you Ms. Lauren Gallagher, and Ms. Mary Wilson. Ms. Wilson? Okay. All right. What was it called? Oh, uh, the oh, Temptation. Oh, no, not Temptation. <laughs> you know what? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> As a matter of fact, can, can stop. Yes. Ms. Wilson? The Supremes. That's what it was. Yes. So, <laughs> yes, it's men. Too. I'm just, that's the I'm thing just from an easy group, you know. So that's very. I'm definitely just from an easy group. These ones are the bad ones. My next guess was Soprano. Are bold questions? 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 Okay, let's take, let's go on to another question. This is a play. This question includes what play was written by an African American female, which has now been made into a TV series featured by the author Lorraine Hansberry. And you all had to read this book, so I'm giving you a hint in your summer reading list. Which play was written by Lorraine Hansberry and featured P. Diddy as the main character? He did it? Yes. He did it on uh, Broadway. Wait, wait, wait. Could you repeat okay. that? Which play by Lorraine Hansberry featured P. Diddy as the main character in the movie? It is a book as well as a movie. <laughs> and this definitely underscores the need for widespread reading among um, all youth, which we want to increase that. 
Um, I'll give you that answer. No one else has it. Um, the answer for that would be a raisin in the sun. Nobody. And we're starting with the easy stuff. Okay. I couldn't get the name out. Go watch it again. Everybody had to read that. The next question includes, let's go for something very familiar. There is a, this woman was the first African-American woman to explore the outer space with NASA. The first African-American. The first is not from the Okay, Raise your hand, Yeah, I heard you. Yeah, I heard you. Excellent. So, what, what are Okay, that's excellent that she knew that. May Jemison is known widespread. I believe it's not a discrepancy of that, but May Jemison is known widely for being the first African American female to go out in outer space. Um, anyone know the first female to go into space? No. no. Is it Sally Ryan? Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. So the next one, we're going to go on to some other other trivia questions that I have here. I'm kind of yes. I have papers on the back of papers. <laughs> this one we're going to stick with arts and entertainment. There you go. <laughs> you all can play the game too. We're playing like this in trivia. So this. This play, which was also a movie, featured Morgan Freeman, and it was written by Alfred, Alfred Unry. The movie was from 1989. What play, written by Alfred Urey, featured Morgan Freeman, became a movie in 1989? Got it. Uh. Which play that became a movie written by Alfred? Don't be afraid of it. Written by Alfred? Not Lee Dummy. Sorry, not Lee Dummy. Next? No. Was it? I think I saw his head first. Okay, Jamil. What was it called? Was it uh, uh, Freedom Riders, I think? Uh, not Freedom Riders. Which 1987 play written by Alfred Unry became a movie in 1989 and it featured Morgan Freeman? Who else was in it? Yeah, well, she said it. Uh, is it Shawshank Redemption? Think of another one. You've been in a lot of movies, man. Was it Glory? No. Uh, okay. So, the answer for that one, uh, I'll, let me see if I can go another hint. It begins with. What was it kind of about? Okay. Um, if I give you what it's about, you know the answer. What part did you so, so, okay. What was it? So, which 1987 play written by Alfred Unry was became a movie in 1989? He played a famous chauffeur. It was actually one of his first major roles. It started his career. No point. Yeah, do sports. One of the answers needs to be Michael Jordan. That's the one I'm gonna answer. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I have a lot of arts and entertainment out here. Like, thought that would be pretty interesting to pursue. Okay, one black actress won an Academy Award for her supporting role in the movie <laughs> Ghost. Had him at What? Ghost? Whoopi Goldberg. Which black actress oh. won an Academy Award for her supporting role in the movie Ghost? Excellent. Whoopi Goldberg. I've seen that movie like a few times. I was, I was a child when that came out, I must say, so I know that I don't know. I see, we, we, have to, we have to 
want to dig deep them. into your movie lexicon as well, <laughs> if there is such a thing. Still, into, still in the uh, area of voice and entertainment, what artist recorded the songs? The Greatest Love of All, I Will Always Love You. I got you. I want to dance with somebody. No, can you sing one of the songs? Okay, thank you. Say Alondra, Alondra got that. Whitney Houston was the artist who was the answer to that. I ain't never said 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 that. I ain't never Okay, so we'll keep going. Uh, let's go quickly. Yeah, this this African-American was influential in medical research using blood transfusion. This, this doctor, let me change that again. This doctor, leading graduate from Howard University, served as a director and was influential for his research in medical and blood this doctor. Okay. So that's why we're, we're definitely here to show that. So not only was he a doctor who served as um, director of the American Red Cross, he, um, his, work, his research was influential in uh, medical research involving blood transfusion. And um, since no one got that, you want to say it? Was it Charles Drew? Dr. Yes. Charles Drew. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Am I allowed to participate? Because I can't answer. So let me go on with that. another one. Let's go on with another one. We'll try with. Um, this African American is known as a famous designer architect of the Washington, D.C. Area. He is a famous architect. This African American architect was considered the designer of the Washington, D.C. area. Oh, that's it? Excellent. Benjamin Banner. Um, not only did he do that, he predicted the eclipse on the sun in 1789. 17, 17, and these are both questions that they expected to know that. that. He predicted the eclipse of the sun in 1789. But he was also the architect of the DC, city of DC, or the planning of the city. Of DC. <coughs> so let's try another. Please. Who wrote the song, the famous song, Say It Live? I can go So I can go, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to go with Jane Brown on that. I'm going to go with Jane on that. Okay, yes. Oh, James Brown. James Brown, thanks. What's my last name? Okay, this is good. The, the book Roots was written by who? Wait, what? I wasn't okay. listening. See, but you have to listen. So, okay. The book Roots was written by who? And Alan Sibley, excellent. The next question uh, also, involves, also involves No, it's not. The book Roots was made into a movie in what year? So you, this is a guess. Okay, you can get this. I wasn't born now. Okay, let's guess. I need to guess a year. The book Roots was made into a movie in what year? Not 1978. Is that close? 1986. Not 1986. What? Not 1990. Is it close? No, y'all ain't close. No, 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 not close. Is this a longer one? 1970. It's a little later than that. Later. 1980. Later. Not 1974. No. Not 74. Yes, for sure. 70 was in the 80s. Go ahead. Not 
Seventy-two. No, seventy-two. Yeah. No, it's not in the seventies. It is in the seventies. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I got it. Seven. Not in the seventies. Who has not taken a step? Oh, they ain't taking a step. Who is it? Who is it? Not the book Roots was made into a movie in what year? Uh, yeah. 1972. Not 1977. Oh, 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 Okay, listen up. The next one will be. Um, go, I'm gonna go easy with this as well. Okay. Who directed the movie? She's got a hand. Oh, nope. Who directed the movie? She's got a hand. Different things. Who directed? And he directed. Miracle at Saint Anna. As well as, not very close, sorry. The Miracle at St. Anna, as well as, she's got to have it, as well as. Jungle Feature? The director can't. Oh, the director. I hear that part. Just say it. Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Yeah, just give an answer. Go ahead. Come on. 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 Let's see if you don't give this. It's really important. Um, this artist sold more than 20 million albums and collected 700,000 pounds of food for charity in 1992. And he did a tour known as Too Legit. Too Legit Quit. Who is this artist? Who is that artist? He had his own pants. Yeah. Trip. Yeah. MC Hammer was that artist. <laughs> I used to do the hands. Yeah, I do that. That was fun. Please, Hammer, don't. He had his own hands. Please, Hammer, don't hurt me. Can we do five more? Is that okay? Oh, we're having fun. Who do you want? Who do you want? Who do you want? Do we have a leader in points? I don't have a leader. I've got the leader. So, this person, this is a, this one you'll have to think about. This person is known as the Black Edison. He invented the railway telegraph, and he did also invented the incubator. And his last name is Woods. I'll give you that. Clip. His last name is Woods. Woods. <laughs> no, he said tiger. Oh, and it won't be tiger though. Right? <laughs> this was um, so this will allow you to explore books and to, to learn about people who have invented um, things. Um, we talked about glad you all talked about computers and technology when you all came up here. Um, that was the part that I most enjoyed of your performance, young guys, because we want teens to not only be users of technology, but uh, innovators and creators of technology so that they can go to Silicon Valley and start their own Facebook. And they made so, the millions of dollars. This person, his last name was Woods, is known as Grand Bull T. Woods. Yes. What was that? Grand Bull T. Woods. Okay? And Grand Bull T. Woods. He's known as Black Edison. He didn't get the credit that Edison got, even though he uh, invented um, the light bulb. Okay. 
Okay, so this artist is known, this, not artist, this inventor, I'll say, is known for creating the first traffic light. Oh, Oh, uh, one of his names is Morgan. I do okay, you gotta get the whole thing. Give us the whole thing. Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, we can my this person is going to create the first traffic light. Um, so, which will also take a look at my display, which is going to be going down tomorrow outside, which I call the Y panel, which has um, some of this information on it. Okay. Let's go with another East. Oh, with, you want to get that one? No. Who the who created the traffic light that was on Gary and Morgan? And I'm making these questions out of my head because they're very easy. The ones I hear are um, very scholarly. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and the other one I will do is he is credited as being the founder of Black History Week, which is now. Black History Month. Got that one? Founder of Black History Month. Um, is this one I used to get confused with Randall T. Woods with this person. And because it's kind of confusing, and I'm going to give you that because his first name is Carter, his last name is Woods. So Carter Woods. She was, was the founder of like, history. Um, so so that, that speaks to where we are. So we want to improve. I'll, I'll do a few more real quick. Yeah. So this sports, this sports athlete, this sports athlete was the star of the 1977 movie, The Greatest. And he was known to be a conscientious, conscientious uh, objector. He is a star of the 1970 movie, The Greatest of All Time. <laughs> oh, oh. And he was known to be a conscientious objector of the Vietnam War. Okay, got it? Okay. This athlete, this athlete is known as the greatest and starred in the 1977 movie, The Greatest of All Time. Muhammad Ali. Good, Muhammad Ali. I should say that was like a butterfly. Wait, then, but now it's Muhammad Ali. And they have Muhammad Ali, so you're correct. Okay. Oh, there goes that thing. Yes. No, that's not um, that's not the next one we're going to do is on this one. I'm going to come up with a, another. See if I can come up with this South Carolina history question in my head. Um, can you do here. something up to date? Part of the African history is looking back to where we've been to learn. Someone is an artist that we know. It's still got a lot of It's all been invented, so somebody has invented it. For that one, it's, it's very important. Um, that's why today you'll see on my display I have the first black doctor in this county. That's important knowledge that you all need to know. Um, what it was like for him to practice in that time. Um, that just takes a lot of inquisitiveness. And hopefully we write, we will write books in this county on our history. That, that's what we do. You work? I've been recording for an hour. Okay, this is what I'm for. Okay. This writer is a poet, and she began her career as a dancer and has written the book, which is also a movie called I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Oh, everybody, I saw that first. Jamel. Jamel. Okay, we can't hear this one. Maya Angelou. Excellent. Okay. I can some good ones on this. That's a good one. Okay, how about? 
read this next one. This African American female was the first black woman to have her own TV show, Tones, own TV series. And this is not, this is the first African American woman to have her own weekly television series. Not network, but series. Oh, not network, I know that. Series. I saw Nicholas first. Ooh. Okay. Oprah? No, that's why I said not oh, Nicholas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I wanted to get you for that. Um, this. I wasn't This Grammy Award winning group is known for their songs such as, or, or their album known as Queen High Harmony, The End of the Road, and. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. Voice Okay, good. Wait, this is yeah, Grammy Award winning group. Yeah, let's finish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got the CD. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so with that, we can go on to some other ones. Um, Sports? Huh? African American was the first male baseball player, African American male baseball player to play for the I'm going to say nature league. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Okay. Is it Jackie Robinson? Jackie Robinson. Oh, this is out of my head. This African American male received the first off. This African American was the first to win an Oscar for Best Actor. Not Denzel Washington. To win Best Actor or an Oscar. Was it a male? Female? Male. 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 And won an Oscar. <laughs> this African American male played Ray and won an Oscar. What's the question? This African American male played Ray Charles in Ray. And won the Oscar. I They should put their hands yeah, down. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. I think I mentioned this question as well. The Roaring Twenties introduced a time of black art, writing, poetry, and music. This era is known as what era? Just the Jazz Age or the Roaring um, so it's more specific to be more specific. The Roaring Twenties introduced a period of black art, literature, music, poetry. Uh, what was that period of time? The Harlem Renaissance. Harlem Renaissance. Yeah. 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 But you all can begin to form your own renaissance because I like to talk about community engagement. Find out what your your group of teens are interested in. Form, form your own societies and be empowered to. Um, if environmental awareness is your thing, promote that at your school. Um, if you're aware of animal cruelty and its mm -hmm. issues like that, definitely um, begin to speak out about that. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen about the dogs being skinned? Mm. Oh, you've seen it too. Seen I it? have seen it too. Oh, God. You've well, seen what? The <laughs> dogs being skinned <laughs> alive. Skinned <laughs> alive. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> some of them that are still alive with their skin. Mr. Allen, you've seen what? Since we are talking about in the schools and all that stuff, may I ask a question? Why, maybe to the ed educators here, why isn't black history being taught in school? Mm -hmm. 
issue of what the <laughs> curriculum standards are for the upper grades and in middle schools they do ancient cultures mm -hmm. so the closest they would probably get to african-american history would be when they discuss egypt, egypt. or the wars um, where carthage was involved um, in greece and rome and things like that but for for that period of time they do ancient cultures mm -hmm. and then i think in eighth grade they move into south carolina <laughs> history mm -hmm. And they should pull it in in that, but there are no specific standards for black history in those upper grades that, that tie in as well. So that's one issue where, we, where you should definitely bring awareness because there are areas where it can be brought in, but since it's not a specific standard, some teachers do not address it. So it's a very good point, and I encourage you to continue bringing it up because especially as we move to Common Core, it's a topic that we can bring in in English, that you can bring in in science, that you can bring in in your history and social studies, especially if you are conscious and aware of it. In the early 80s, my sorority was given a draft it was about this thick of black history. And we were asked to, to report and we did report, we don't know what happened, it just dropped, but it was this thick, uh -huh. a rough draft of black history. Yeah, and we kept I'm waiting to see, you know, hardbound, some, some, somewhere in print, but we have not seen that or heard anything since. And I've been around in school now for years, and it's not, um, it's not good And when I went to school, we were taught, we had to learn um, certain yeah. songs. Uh, it was like the national anthem. Yeah. And that song, what you used to say, we had to learn that. And to be for assembly. It definitely sounds like it's, it's really going to take a push to really include those in, especially with the new That's curriculum. We'll because uh, yeah. I, have seen, I have seen students coming in mass to, um, to get their Native American projects completed. Um, but this month, I I can't really re recall projects for students that were going on. Well, it was on. interesting because my granddaughter had to do a report. Um, so, but I think that's very important. We'll, we'll have to push for that because we want students to begin to um, to write about the history as well as um, use technology to bring awareness. Um, about the history of um, our people because that's that's something that's important because if we don't um, remember where it's your doom to repeat it, um, we don't want your generation of people to to come to the library and find out that there's nothing on their family members. There's no record of who they are. So part of what our role is in everyday life is to really be walking genealogists. Because even though you're not these, these famous, well-known people, you still matter. So, and you matter to the people that will come before you. So that's why it's important that um, we keep church programs, we keep family reunion programs, because um, these names on this paper are, are people, but the people that matter the most are um, 
learning about what you can about your great great grandparents. Some of you may haven't seen, but ask around and see if there's any information about them because that will, um, it, if, it, if it's appropriate to do so. But that's the type of history that you create with your own family too. So that's why we want you to, to really be, be walking genealogists. And technology is allowing us to do that. Um, through using Ancestry.com, you all can create your own Tumblr, Tumblr page. How, you've heard of that before? Um, and it will, it, it's definitely easy. We can even do a Tumblr on this program as well as um, other things. So it's really just a website so that people can find out what's going on through pictures, text, um, and even audio, correct? So with that, do we have a clear winner with that? No, we have oh, a great tie. Okay, so we're going to break this tie and then we're going to um, allow you all to. You want to know what the ties between? Yes. Are you interested or you just want to try to break the tie? Let's, let's, let's break this really quickly. This was known as the first African American poet to be nationally recognized. He's known for his poem, We Wear the Mask. This first, he was the first African American poet to be recognized nationally, and he wrote the poem, We Wear the Mask. And he's not a current poet. He's a what? Not current. He's, yeah. This Harlem Renaissance poet um, was the first African American poet to be recognized for his writing. This first was the first African American poet to be recognized nationally. He wrote the poem, We Bear the Mask. He has three names, and the first one is Paul. Next one, let's go with. This character played. Oh, the answer for that one was Paul Lawrence Dunbar. This character played. The fictitious Dr. Cliff Hustable in this TV, 1980s TV show. Oh, I saw Nicholas first. Bill Cross? No, I'm sorry. I saw uh, uh, Tyler. Tyler was first. I don't know, but Tyler's how you stand up. Yeah, you didn't say it right. I heard you say it. Um, um, what did he say? Name. I don't remember the name. Nicholas did give. He, he said it. Did he say it? Okay. Okay. Let's stop for it. Say it pronoun pronounce it correctly. Okay. This uh, this actor has played Doctor Flint Huxtable in the 1980s, 1980s TV show. Bill Cosby. Thank you. Okay. We're going to see what happens in just a minute. Okay. B.B. King is known for what type of music that The tie is broken. The tie is broken, so Tyler is our deep winner. Um, so wow. Thank you very much for that. Now we're going to... B.B. King does say blues. I'm not going to blue off. Can we go ahead and get that blue? Yes. All the screen will tear the black is. We thank you all for coming to our Youth in Action Summit, guys. Um, we do have pizza back there for you all. If you need to eat, eat it up in the microwave. You can get it. You can get it. This concludes our program. Thank you all for coming to this space.